Every single person has secrets, but what you want are that those secrets are actually good ones. And how sweet is that secret good deed that you meet Allah with on the day of judgment? And you know that it was just this goodness between you and him that no one else knew about. Imagine how pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with that deed. Sadaqatu sir, tutfi'u ghadab al-rabb. The Prophet said, secret charity extinguishes the anger of your Lord. And how pleased are you going to be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that up in his conversation with you? Like, ya abdi, oh my slave, I remember that moment of prayer, that charity, that good thing that you did for me and you didn't tell anyone else about, and now here is my gift back to you. Now, on the other hand, there's also this fear that the believer has of secret sins. We might be struggling with something in private and we're trying to overcome it, but death comes to us and we still haven't been able to completely stop those sins. We keep repenting, but somehow we keep on repeating. So what happens on the day of judgment when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those books are laid in front of you? and nothing is concealed any longer. Allah is going to forgive people on the day of judgment with a forgiveness that no person has ever been able to conceive or imagine. And here you are in the most critical moments of your standing before Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unveils 99 scrolls of your sins, each one of them to the end of your vision. Now, by the way, this is the believer, not the hypocrite, okay? Every single one of us has some scroll of sin and it's right in front of you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply puts it out in front of you. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma minkum min ahad illa sayukallimuhu rabbu there is not a single person amongst you except that his Lord is going to speak to him directly without any intermediary or any translator. And so as you're standing there and Allah is addressing you and you've got those scrolls in front of you, the Prophet ﷺ says, So he looks to his right to see if there's anyone or anything that's going to come to his aid. But all he sees are deeds that he put forward. There's no one else there. And then he looks to his left. And the only thing he sees on his left are deeds that he sent forth. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, then he looks ahead and he sees the fire facing him. Now for the hypocrite who knows that this is not going to end well, that his book is about to come to his left hand, and he's effectively doomed. What does he do? He puts his left hand behind his back. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he receives his book bishimalihi in his left hand. In one place in the Quran, Allah says bishimalihi. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says min wara'a dhahri, behind his back. Why? Because as he puts his left hand behind his back, a chain comes and locks his left hand behind his back. And then the book comes to his left hand locked in that position behind his back. And anyone that is walking behind him can see the shame of that person on that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So both the questioning and the humiliation for that person are public. But Allah isn't interested in humiliating the sincere believer. Now Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he was asked, he said, what did the Prophet sallallahu say about an najwa the private conversation? And realize that the Prophet sallallahu said, when you go into Salah, when you go into prayer, you are in Najwa, you're in a secret dialogue with your Lord. So Ibn Umar is being asked, what did the Prophet ﷺ say about the Najwa on the Day of Judgment, the secret dialogue? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Yudna al mu'minu yawm al qiyamati min rabbihi hata yada alayhi kanafa. Allah brings forth the believer very near to him on the Day of Judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places his veil over him, and his veil is a veil of light. So you're now close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's just you and him and no one else is hearing this conversation. Allah is making this part of the hisab private. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you see these secret sins, these sins that you weren't proud of and people didn't know about. Hal ta'rif, oh my servant, do you acknowledge these sins? And the believer will say, ay rabbi a'rif, my Lord, I acknowledge them. I'm not trying to run away. 
I'm not trying to deny anything. I'm not trying to say uh, I don't accept any witnesses. I'm not going to praise myself. Ya Rabb, I failed in this regard. I messed up and I wasn't proud of it. It's not something I would boast about. But Ya Rabb, I acknowledge these things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says to his servant, فَإِنِّي قَدْ سَتَرْتُهَا عَلَيْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنِّي أَخْفِرُهَا لَكَ الْيَوْمِ I concealed those sins for you in this world. And today, I'm going to forgive you for them. They're all gone. And the Prophet ﷺ said, he's given his record of good deeds and the sins have been obliterated. In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, in the place of every sayyia, in the place of every sin that you sought forgiveness for, there is now a hasana, there is now a good deed. To the point that the servant says, Ya Rabb, my Lord, there are things that I don't see here, sins that I committed that I don't see here. And the Prophet ﷺ smiled so broadly as he was narrating this conversation to us that his back teeth could be seen وسلم, at the mercy of his Lord. And this is what the scholars say is the tafsir of when Allah Azzawajal mentions that the believer receives his book in his right hand and then he goes back to the gathering and he says, Ha umukra'u kitabiya. Everyone come read my book because that book doesn't have those sins anymore. Everyone come read my book. Inni lanantu anni mulaqin hisabiya. I knew that this day was coming. I knew that I was going to be held accountable and I prepared myself for this day. And he's going through the gathering. Look at this good deed. Look at that good deed. You know, no one. No one is being humble on that day when they receive their book in their right hand. You're not trying to hide it away and say, you know, Alhamdulillah, things are okay. No, you're going around saying, here it is. Here's the salah. Here's the sadaqah. Here are the places that I went to of good when I was called to go to places of evil. Here are the words that I said. Here's the backbiting I refused to partake in, but instead contested when I heard it. Here are all of these good deeds. Look, it's here. Look, it's here. And you're celebrating and celebrating and celebrating the mercy of your Lord upon you. And SubhanAllah, as you are going around with that book and you are running around to the various people and showing off your good deeds from that moment that you just had with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You know, one thing that I think about is the connection of that to the very first person the Prophet Sallallahu told us his question. The very first person who was questioned, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says to him, didn't you think that you were going to meet me? Weren't you ready for this meeting? And that person wasn't ready. This person can make one claim in that gathering. He can say, Inni I knew this moment was coming. I was ready for this moment. And so as you're going around, ask yourself, who are you going to run to in that gathering? Your parents, your Prophet وسلم, or someone else to celebrate your graduation to the next phase of the Day of Judgment. فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ